Welcome back to Cruder.com. In this first video on financial formulas, we're going to be going over the time value of money formulas that are shown here, the PV, rate, NPER, payment, and future value. Now I've put together this fairly simple example of a home loan that's for $100,000 and you're trying to purchase this home over here. Typically you don't just have a stack of money that you're bringing over to pay for the house. You usually have to go to the bank to get a loan. And let's say that loan is therefore $100,000. And today's rates are 4% per year and the number of years that you have to pay this back is 30 years. These are always the consistent inputs to figuring out a loan and then therefore figuring out, well, how much is your monthly payment? So let's start here just by typing the payment formula. And as you can see, it pops up and says that it calculates the payment for a loan based on consistent payments and a consistent interest rate. Okay, so that makes sense that it's trying to calculate based on how a home loan operates the payment and it needs to know the rate, the number of periods, the present value, which is all labeled right here. So present value, rate, number of periods. I've already put in the inputs and then the future value optionally and then the type. So the type is looking for a zero or a one optionally and then by default, it'll take zero. And so zero means that it's being paid in arrears, which means it's being paid late or paid after the period happened. And then all of this accrued interest is then being paid at the end of the period versus being paid at up front at the beginning of a month. So in a home type of a loan, it's being paid in arrears. But if you're thinking about renting a house or something like that, that's usually paid in advance. Therefore, you'd use the number one here at the end to signify that. So let's start here with the rate. And I'm actually gonna type this a little incorrectly at the beginning, just to show you some of the examples of what could go wrong and how to problem solve to fix it. So the rate right here is this amount. So I'm gonna put a comma, the number of periods is 30 and the present value of the home loan today is $100,000. And again, the future value is in brackets, meaning it's optional and same with the type. So type is default at zero, which means it's being paid at the end of the month or being paid in arrears, which is how a home loan operates. So I'm just gonna close it up and hit enter. And I don't know about you, but $5,000 per month seems awfully high. And so I actually typed this in wrong, like I was saying, so that we could go back and kind of problem solve to see what's going on and why it's incorrect. So let's pop back into here using F2. And let's look back at these arguments. So the rate we're looking at first, so the rate is right here, interest rate of 4%. Well, this is a yearly rate. So we need to pay attention to what we're talking about. So this is a monthly payment, but a yearly rate. And you gotta think, how often am I paying this mortgage? You're paying it monthly. So therefore, you actually have to divide that 4% into 12 different months. So you're actually not paying 4% per month, you're paying 1 12th of 4% per month. And then the same thing with the number of periods. So how many periods are there? Well, it's a 30 year loan, but the number of periods on how you're paying it is actually months. So we actually need to multiply this by 12. Dividing the rate by 12, and then you're multiplying the number of periods by 12, the present value stays the same as $100,000 because that doesn't change whatsoever. So now let's see what we get. All right, this seems much more reasonable. About $500 per $100,000 loan at 4% for 30 years. So we're only gonna be paying about $500 a month. And then let's go ahead and just calculate how much money we'll be spending over the next 30 years if our monthly payment stays constant at this $500 amount. So let's multiply this times the 30 times 12. So what we're doing, we're saying, hey, this is gonna be paid for the next 30 years and there's 12 months in a year. So let's return that. You're gonna be paying out of pocket $171,000 to pay back this $100,000 loan. You can easily see that $71,000 of this will be interest and the 100,000 will be principal. Now the next thing we need to do is learn how do these other formulas operate? And to do this, let's pretend like we already knew our monthly payment. So I'm just gonna copy this and paste it special as a value. So this was actually an input. And let's say, um, here let me pop down my ribbon. So control and F1, we'll pop it down. This is now yellow, so it's an input, but this one I'm gonna delete it. Now we're gonna put this as a calculation. So I'm gonna say no fill and let me hide that ribbon, control F1, and let's start typing it. So equals PV, and you can remember that we're using PV because we wanna know the present value of something. What is the value of this loan today? That's what present value means, literally present. Today's value of the loan. 
And so we'll start with the rate just like we did before, right here. And again, just as we did before, let's make sure that we divide it by 12 months because we're paying 12 individual payments per year. Then we're gonna take the term of the loan, 30 years, and make sure we multiply that by 12 because there's 12 periods in each year. And then the payment that we've already calculated, this monthly payment, make sure that this is monthly, that you're not putting in a yearly payment. And then close it up and hit enter. And you can see the formula returns exactly what we expected, $100,000. All right, and I think this is making sense, so let's quickly go ahead and do the rate and the NPER formulas. And so to do that, let's copy this and paste it in as a value as if we had that already there and let's put this as a formula. So I'm gonna do the rate formula to figure out the rate. And just notice that it's always these same arguments. So I'm gonna grab this NPER, make sure that we multiply it by 12, and then grab the payment, the monthly payment that we calculated earlier, and then the present value, and then close it up. And you can see it equals zero. All right, I have no idea what's going on. Why is it zero? And the reason is, is it's because we're dividing it by 12, so we're actually getting a monthly rate. So therefore, this is 1 12th of the 4%. So if we times it by 12 months, we should get 4%. Okay, so now we have this. Let's just actually type this in as 4%, and then let's do NPER. So let's calculate this one. So NPER, number of periods we're calculating here. And this time it's asking for the rate first. Remember to divide this by 12, comma, the payment, which is this amount comma, the present value, close it up and hit enter. The same thing happens as it just did in the interest rate where it's giving us the data in months. So now we need to go ahead and divide it by 12 to get 30 years. Now the last thing we need to do to check our work is create an amortization table. So I put in the headers here and let's start with this loan balance. So the beginning loan balance is $100,000. And we calculated that the payments are gonna be 477 per month. And I'm gonna lock this up with F4 because that's gonna be constant for every single month. Now the thing we need to figure out now is the split between principal and interest for each payment. So it's easiest if we start with the interest because we can take the current loan balance and multiply that by 4% interest. Make sure we lock this up with F4 because that's not going anywhere, but we're gonna drag it down. And then we need to then divide it by 12 because that's an annual rate and we need to divide it into a monthly rate. So then we can tab over and it says 333. So actually let's go back F2 in it and then put in a negative so that it comes back as an outgoing amount. Then the principal amount should just be the difference between the payment and the interest that's outgoing. And that's 144 this first month. And the new loan balance is the beginning balance plus the principal paid down. Now that we have the ending balance of that loan, we can come over here and put that in as the beginning balance and hit enter, and then we can copy this down. Actually, I'm gonna paste formulas, just so I don't get rid of some formatting. And then we can select all the way across and just double click it down. Now let's go down to the bottom, control down, and you can see at the very end, the last payment, 360, that's the very last payment, our loan balance at the end is zero. That's exactly what we want, so we know that we did it correctly.